there's a lot of confusion out there about fail safe uh, in, in clean flight, how it works and what it does under what conditions. And so I thought I'd take a few minutes and, and make a video about that and hopefully help clear some of that confusion up. Fail safe refers to what the copter or plane is going to do when it loses signal from the transmitter. Uh, and it's very important because you, you can, no matter how good your radio protocol is, you can't guarantee that you're never going to lose signal. And you want you know, the plane to do something, or copter, to do something that is uh, the optimal thing for that scenario. Uh, so for example, in the case of a copter, you might want the copter to shut the throttle off and just let the copter crash, right? You don't want it to continue to be throttled up and, and fly away. And in the, in the case of a plane, perhaps you want the plane to throttle down and try to glide into the ground gracefully, as opposed to, you know, again, staying throttled up and flying away. So failsafe is very important. If you have a, an RF aircraft, you definitely need to have thought about and configured and tested your failsafe Otherwise, the day will come when you have some kind of uh, a link loss and you'll be just at the mercy of chance as to what happens. Now, there's actually two kinds of failsafe in the uh, clean flight model. There's failsafe in the receiver and there's failsafe in the flight controller. The receiver's failsafe controls what the receiver will do when it loses link to the transmitter. Clean flight's failsafe controls what clean flight will do when it loses signal from the receiver. And it is very important to have both kinds of failsafe. A lot of people uh, configure their receiver failsafe and they think that that's it, they think they're done. But what, if, what happens if the receiver becomes disconnected from clean flight somehow while uh, the board is still powered up? So for example, maybe you just have a bad solder joint on your signal pin and you know everything is still powered up but just clean flight loses link to the receiver. Or uh, maybe there's a brownout on your 5 volt regulator and the receiver is more sensitive to brownout than clean flight and so the receiver powers down but clean flight is still powered up or i even saw a video on youtube where two copters crashed in midair and one of their receiver was literally just torn off the copter entirely okay so we have to have clean uh we have to have fail safe configured in both clean flight and the receiver it's not good enough to just configure uh, fail safe in the receiver uh, because that doesn't cover you for the scenario where clean flight is still powered up, but the receiver is lost in some way. So let's talk about receiver failsafe now. There's basically three types of receiver failsafe that are commonly found. Not all receivers are able to do all of these types, but some of them can do all of them, and some of them only do one, and you got to read your documentation on your receiver to find out what it can do. The three types of receiver failsafe are no pulses, hold last position, and preset positions. So with no pulses, when the receiver loses the radio link, it stops sending any signals out of its output pins. So basically it's as if the receiver had powered down, okay? Hold last position means that the receiver continues to transmit the last position on the channel that was, was sent before the radio link went down. And preset positions means that the receiver jumps all the channels to some preset position that you configure. So preset positions is sort of the most obvious of, of them. Uh, in the case of a multi-rotor, you could use preset positions to trigger return to home, for example, by having an aux channel set to trigger return to home and then having the receiver fail safe set to put the aux channel in the position that causes return to home to trigger. That's a common thing that people do. Uh, preset positions could also be something like zero throttle. If you if you have a little 250 mini quad, and in the result, in the event of a, of a failsafe, you just want to dump it into the ground, just shut it down. Okay. So pre, uh, in a case of a fixed wing, you might typically go zero throttle, a small amount of up elevator and neutral ailerons, and that would kind of cause the plane to kind of porpoise in gently to a landing. Ideally, hopefully, that's what you would hope for, but who knows in reality. Um, some people will set their plane to have a little bit of, of left rudder uh, so that the plane will kind of slowly spiral into the ground when it loses signal. You know, that's better than uh, continuing to fly straight, they think. Okay, so that's how preset positions is used. Hold last position, I think, is, is the most dangerous of these three options. Uh, for example, if you're throttled up and you go into fail safe and have hold last position active, you'll stay at the throttle level you were at. And for a fixed wing, that's that's bad, 
but it's not maybe like the worst thing ever. But on a multi rotor, if you're throttled up and you go you go into fail safe with a whole last position, the multi rotor will just continue to climb straight up into the air. A fixed wing is not probably unless it's like really powerful, gonna just climb straight up into the air. It'll keep flying straight, and that's bad. But I mean, it's gonna crash pretty soon, right? It's probably not gonna just keep flying straight and level until it crashes. I don't know, maybe it will, depending on if it's got dihedral in the wings or whatever. But a multi rotor, if you're throttled up at the moment that hold last position goes goes into effect, that thing will just fly to the moon, and eventually, you know, after five minutes or ten minutes or whatever, the battery will die, and then it'll come down, and who knows where it's going to come down. It's bad, okay? Um, so I think hold last position is is the worst of these three options, and and frankly, uh, there are some receivers out there that hold last position is the only type of failsafe they support. The one I'm thinking of is the Fly Sky system used by the Turner G9X, and I think these are really not appropriate for use with multi-rotors. I know there's a lot of people out there just getting into the hobby and they fly the Turner G9X with the FlySky receivers. By the way, that's FlySky, not FreeSky. Those are two different things. Not like the Tyrannus and the FreeSky, you know, X4R I've got up here. FlySky is different. Okay, so I, I know that there's a lot of people out there, especially new people getting into the hobby uh, on a budget who, who do fly these, and I think there's a real risk there uh, the most likely thing to happen if you're flying a multi-rotor and you go into hold last position is that it's going to crash because it's probably going to be turning and for the turn is probably going to just put it into the ground. But especially if you're flying in an auto level mode, uh, that's a different story. If you're flying in an auto level mode and you're flying straight and you have slightly more than half throttle and you go into hold last position fail safe, the copter will continue to fly straight and will continue to climb and it'll just, it's gone. That's the end of it. So I don't really have an answer for anybody who wants to get into the hobby on a budget but doesn't want to buy like a Tyrannus. You certainly could buy a, a 9X and put a DJT module in it and use FreeSky receivers, but at that point you're kind of coming up on the price of it. You're not quite to the price of a Tyrannus, but you're kind of there. You're getting there, and so I don't know. But that's I think that the cold last position is a bad kind of fail-safe, and it's very dangerous, especially for multi-rotors. But it's not ideal for fixed wings either. Just, just, to, just to stipulate though, the reason hold last position is there is that if you're flying and you have just a momentary dropout, hold last position is good because let's say you're sort of banking left and you have just a 50 millisecond dropout. Well, that means the copter will it'll just keep doing what it's doing until the signal reestablishes itself, and that's good. But if the signal doesn't reestablish itself, that's bad. Okay, so that's that's it for that. And then the final one is no pulses, and the idea with no pulses is that no pulses would just basically shut down the receiver. Uh, if you're flying a fixed wing, the ESC will turn off, right? And the servos, I believe the servos will probably just hold the last position they were in. They'll just sort of stay there, but they won't actively hold that position against outside forces. So if there's enough wind force, the wind could move the control surfaces, right? And no pulses is probably most useful if you have a flight controller. I don't think I would use no pulses on a fixed wing. On a fixed wing, I would probably use preset positions and, like I said, set up the control surfaces how they how they need to be to make the plane sort of gently spiral into a landing and a glide and a glide slope. Um, but no pulses. The idea with no pulses is that when the receiver loses link, it just shuts down, and clean flight takes over with its own internal failsafe. So the idea here is that instead of having to set failsafe in your receiver and failsafe in your in your flight controller. Forget that. Take the receiver out of the picture. When the when the receiver loses radio link, the receiver basically just bows out and clean flight takes over with its own form of failsafe. Okay, so how does clean flight's failsafe work? Clean flight's failsafe has two stages. Uh, by the way, this this changed in clean flight 1.10. So if you're running clean flight 1.9 or earlier, well, some of the stuff I'm about to say doesn't apply. But in clean flight 1.10, there's two stages to the failsafe. In stage one, the idea is that the receiver has gone away, but maybe it's going to come back really soon. And we don't want to do anything drastic. So, so the idea is that you may be having an intermittent radio link loss, and we kind of just want to keep the copter doing what it was doing, keep all the channels in a reasonably safe position in hopes that it's going to come back. And stage one lasts until the parameter failsafe off delay expires. I believe that defaults to one second. And after that time expires, if 
the receiver has not come back, then stage two initiates, and in stage two, the copter attempts to land itself. It basically, in stage two, it goes into auto level mode, and it uses the fail-safe throttle parameter that you should have configured to a throttle level that will descend at about one meter per second. So it'll it'll auto level itself, and then it'll it'll set a throttle level that'll cause it to descend at about one meter per second, and it will do that for so many seconds. Again, you configure it. I believe that's fail-safe off delay is the parameter. And the idea being that you can say level out, descend for five seconds, and then shut your motors off. Okay, stage one and stage two fail safe. By the way, stage two is only active if you have feature fail safe active. If you don't have feature fail safe active, then after stage one expires, that's just it, it shuts down. Uh, I think that stage two is, is a pretty risky proposition, and not everybody agrees with me, and I don't want to have an argument about which is right or wrong. You know, I don't want people to swarm the channel with comments telling me why it's right or wrong. These are debates that other people have had. It's my channel, so I'm going to give you my opinion. I think it's risky. Um, if you're flying a mini quad, especially like a racing quad, you can drop those. I've seen these things fall from 50 feet in the air, and they just drop, and they crash, and maybe you break a prop, and usually they're fine, okay? So I feel like the risk of just dumping it, if you lose signal, just shut it down, dump it. I feel like the risk of that is relatively low compared to the risk of spinning your props and trying to guess as to how long the props need to land in order to do a graceful landing. And maybe they land, and maybe it lands on the ground, and maybe it lands in someone's face. I don't know. I just want it. I don't want a spinning prop. I don't want the props spinning and the ESCs energized at the moment that the copter hits the ground, or hits a car, or hits a window, or hits some person. If I am going to dump it, I just want it to be a rock falling out of the sky. It weighs 550 grams. It's not going to do too much damage to whatever it hits, and it's probably not going to hurt itself. And that's my opinion on stage two. So I, I set up the stage two fail safe to just literally shut down immediately. I don't try and do any of the auto landing stuff. But some people feel differently, and I respect their opinion, and you can read their arguments over on RC groups or wherever else. Okay, so the thing, the thing that is confusing about this, though, is that stage one, the default config for stage one is actually to set the throttle to zero, which is confusing to a lot of people because when failsafe is initialized, the copter will go to zero throttle for one second, and then it'll go to the failsafe throttle, which is you know the slow descent, and that's really unintuitive to people. You can actually change that using the rx fail command, and you can say rx fail channel three is the throttle and h for hold, and that will cause it to hold its previous value that is not the default. I believe the default is auto, let's put that back before I forget, and auto uh, shuts the throttle down. You can actually set any of these RX fail parameters to control what your channels do uh, when the link is lost, but before fail, before fail safe kicks in. And, and so you, there are many different things you can do with that. I'd like to close up now with just a brief discussion of what I think the, the best way to do this is. And again, this is just my opinion, and other people may disagree, but the first thing you need to do, you must do, is you must make sure that you've configured clean flights fail safe in addition to your receiver fail safe. Because if you haven't, then as soon as you lose your link, uh, who knows what clean, clean flight's going to do. And if you ever lose your receiver, but clean flight's still powered up, you'll be in an unknown mode. The defaults should be reasonably safe, but you need to check it. Um, I like no pulses. And just configure then the fail safe in clean flight. That's the simplest thing to do. Not all receivers support no pulses, in which case preset positions can be used. And if you set one of the channels so that it is less than min check, uh, sorry, no, min rx min usec. If you set one of the channels so it goes below rx min usec, that will trigger trigger fail safe manually as well. That'll that's an invalid value. So just set one of your endpoints to be less than RX min USEC and set your receiver uh, channel to that value and that'll trigger it. You can also do this in the modes tab. Oh, um, out of, it's gonna take a minute to reboot and I'm gonna run out of time on this. <laughs> uh, anyway, you can also do it in the modes tab. There's a fail safe mode that you can use and that's what I think the right thing to do is. Uh, whatever you do though, test your fail safe both by turning off your receiver and by unplugging it to make sure that everything's working correctly. That's it for that, and happy flying.